welcome to another vlog it is monday august 20 something anyway so i'm getting ready to go to lunch i'm gonna meet diana saldana a lot of you guys on here may know who she is um she's flying in from new york and yeah we're gonna go catch up have lunch it is now the storm has passed hurricane hillary um it really wasn't that bad at all i really don't like how they hyped it up but i understand it's probably a good thing for us to be prepared anyway but i haven't we haven't dressed for the rain in a really long time and it's also dead of summer so it's been really really hot like 90 close to 100 degrees and now we have this rain so it's kind of confusing so this is what i'm ending up with as my outfit i already changed twice so i have just my hat on in case it does kind of drip a little bit then i have this cardigan that i got from mango it has a matching little um like bralette i guess or what is it crop tank inside excuse me while i add or button this button back up then i just have this like cargo skirt from zara and then my little sambas so i feel like i'm just like running way too late that i'm just gonna stick with this and call it a day even though i'm kind of unsure which is really annoying because i like to be sure but we're late so all right, so I don't have a like stand for my car. So you guys will unfortunately have to see me in my nostrils, but I wanted to tell you guys that I was on a podcast. It's like a baby podcast. <laughs> so I don't know how interested you guys will be in that. I'm hoping you are, because maybe you want to get to know me. <laughs> But I will say that I do talk about, you know, where, where I was born and raised, a little bit about how Jamie and I met, and yeah, how I started on YouTube and things like that, which leads me to a good question for you guys. If you guys want me to go in depth about anything specific, like maybe how I started on YouTube, maybe how I met Jamie, then let me know. Otherwise, if you guys want to know my birth story, um, then you can listen to this podcast. I think I also recorded that a while ago. Obviously, it was almost three years since I've had Presley. But yeah, it was pretty eventful. It was a pretty eventful birthing experience that I had. But obviously, it was all worth it. I will link the podcast in the description box. Look who it is! Hi. Everybody's favorite! <laughs> I'm so happy we're in LA. We just had the best lunch. She actually made it, even though, you know, our hurricane was actually not real. I know, I was crazy. like expecting for my flight to be delayed. I was like, um, I'm gonna have to take Naomi and tell her no lunch today. <laughs> I know. Well, she literally is not, didn't even get a hotel. She just came. In and out. In and out. Rented 24 a car, hours in LA. Leaving tonight. Aww. Going back home. I know. I feel like I want to come back with the kids so we can get the kids together and go to Disney. I know. We need to. We and need do family to things. Trip. We need to do a girls trip. Maybe I we'll know. Do a girls trip. I feel like we should do the girl, girls trip first. All right, guys. <laughs> so just wanted to. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm in my car. It is so hot. It's like. My car says it's 93 degrees. We just had all that rain yesterday and it's so hot right now. So much so. I'm wearing a skirt and I had to take my cardigan off because it was just too much. So that was such a nice lunch with Diana. Every time I see her, it's just such a breath of fresh air. You know, it's just so nice to see a fellow creator that like does such similar similar things and like also understands like the life of having kids and juggling it all and just it's so nice because i feel like we also have such similar values when it comes to like life friendships parenting and things like that and i feel like it's so rare nowadays to connect on that level especially like in LA and sometimes I also feel like it's harder for me because I come from such a small island I almost in a way have a lot of expectations you know what I mean and not in a bad way but I don't know maybe some of you guys can relate to if you come from like other places like not part of the 50 states or if you come from like smaller parts of 
you know, the US, maybe the Midwest, whatever, and then you move to like a big place like LA. It's just really nice when you meet people that are just so similar to you because I feel like it's so rare, especially when you do have like a lot of, you know, values and certain things like that. Anyway, I am gonna go home now and see baby Presley. So I'm back now. Not sure if I said that to you guys. I am about to jump in the shower and just like take off all my makeup and all of it. So I am just like putting stuff away from my purse. You know, all the stuff that you do as a woman when you get home. I used to have a really bad habit of just leaving everything in my purse, but I would like change my purses daily. And so then I would just have stuff in all pur my purses and it was just annoying. So now I have made it a good habit to just take things out immediately. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so I have been getting like these migraines almost every single day for the past two weeks. And I've never really been one to be like, oh, I have a migraine. I just would always think that they're a really bad headaches and they would be like up here and all the way to the back of my head and always on one side usually on the left side i feel like that's always where like i carry most of my tension and stress and then jamie's always been one to have migraines so when i was kind of describing my headache pain to him he was like that is a migraine <laughs> because like sometimes i'd feel nauseous sometimes i'd feel like sensitivity to light but I just never really like thought it was a migraine or thought anything like more of it than just like oh my head hurts really bad you know and I've always like thought about migraine people to like always need to like be in a dark room which for me I just work through it all the time I don't you know no matter how bad my head's pounding it's like I don't really have time to be in a dark room very much or I just don't like deem it a migraine anyway and then like associate it with all those people that i hear having to be in like a dark room or whatever but i also think i have a higher pain tolerance when it comes to like head pain just because i feel like i've gotten so many headaches in my lifetime that i'm just used to it it's like whatever i won't even take anything i haven't even i barely had like taken anything for it the past two weeks one of the times i took advil and that didn't really work and then I called my mom because I was like, oh my God, what if this is what my mom gets, which she has occipital neuralgia? Anyway, what's crazy about all this is that I was working out one day and you know, the headache formed or whatever, and it was in the same area. And I was just thinking to myself, Maybe I need to hydrate in another way besides just always drinking water because I'm a good water drinker. But I was like, maybe I need to hydrate like with electrolytes or something. Like maybe I just need to hydrate better. And I was thinking like Gatorade, something with like electrolytes and salt or something. And what's funny is that a couple days ago, Jamie sent me this video, I think a TikTok video from a doctor. He deals with a lot of migraine patients. And he was saying that he'll tell his patients to try just drinking straight up salt water. And I was like, oh my God, that's so crazy that you said that because I was just thinking that I needed to hydrate in a different way. And I was just gonna buy like um, Gatorade. But I know Gatorade a lot of times has a lot of sugar and I know there's Gatorade with less sugar. So then I found Element it's LMNT. I've been hearing about it on like different podcasts, so I decided to try it out. And their flavors are like orange salt, watermelon salt. I'll bring it over to you guys. So this is what the pack looks like from Amazon. And it says 12 pack, four different flavors, so three of each flavor. The flavors are citrus salt, raspberry salt, orange salt, and watermelon salt. And I had the orange salt just before I got in the shower and it tastes really good. There's no sugar, 
but there's a thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium, which I've been hearing all kinds of great things about magnesium. So I just took a whole like 16 ounce of it and I feel like it's kind of helping, not fully though. So I will see, it might have to be a thing where I do it for a couple of days, I don't know. But we'll see. I'm going to try it because, you know, I was getting it every day, these migraines, and then it came to the point where I was just so tired of feeling this way. It was actually, like, daunting. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was just over it. I was like, okay, I can't keep going on like this. I need to just take something because I don't want to keep taking something. Oh, my God. I don't even know what I'm doing. But anyway, this leads me to my next, like, topic, I guess. I talked on Instagram about this but i basically found a new doctor i found this new doctor she's an integrative like doctor integrative medicine doctor her name is dr jessica cho she's here in la at century city i heard her or i found her through podcasts Ariel lori from the blonde Faust podcast i listen to her a lot when it comes to like health and wellness stuff just because i feel like she finds really good doctors and i always feel like i connect with the doctors that she finds like i feel like she also has really good taste in things and like our taste in things is pretty similar you know she does a lot of like injectable stuff too nothing too crazy like i think she looks good for what she does and her story is also just really interesting like she used to be like a rock bottom addict anyway i um just telling them about how i found my doctor on youtube so Anyway, I found her through her podcast, and now I'm gonna go, no, I actually had a consultation with her, one hour consultation with her, and it was just like a really good experience. We're gonna check everything. My main concern is like cholesterol, because like it kind of runs in my family, but I'm also gonna find out if that's really true, if my cholesterol, if I do have like high cholesterol, if it is actually genetic or self-inflicted and we're gonna you know figure out how to treat that and just I'm doing a whole body check because every time I do like a physical at UCLA at my old doctor she would just like do the bare minimum and they only checked for four things whereas the one I'm gonna get checks like 12 things so it's like a whole body thing which comes just in time with this whole migraine issue that I'm having Hopefully she can help me with that. But yeah, she was just like such a wealth of knowledge. She explained so much to me. Night and day from all the other doctors I've seen. She has her own practice. So she, what I like is that she also kind of, you know, she went to USC School of Medicine. Was very excited to get into her field. Obviously did her whole residency and the whole nine. But was also like founding herself really burnt out. And I guess she got pregnant and got diagnosed with something or had some kind of health issue of her own, which led her to become an actual patient in a hospital. And she said that while she was there, the doctors just like prescribed her all these things, like all these pills. And she was like, this cannot be the way to heal. Like there has to be a better way. So that's when she decided to do her own thing in integrative medicine, start her own practice. And I like that. She has... She knows what it's like to be a patient. So she does Eastern and Western medicine combined. She'll do Eastern and natural, naturopathic ways, I guess, as long as it is working and helps, but also understands that there's some things that where Western medicine needs to be used and looked into. So I'll keep you guys updated on my little journey here. Hate getting blood drawn. Had a baby, but still hate getting blood drawn. So we'll see. Hopefully nothing bad, but hopefully just getting better. All right, I am going to get our dinner ready. We already have dinner made. I like making dinner like that's enough for two days, and it's usually always the case when I make Japanese curry. And yesterday was a rainy day with the hurricane and so I made Japanese curry right here. So I'm just gonna warm it back up. We already have the rice going and that's what we're gonna have. And we're gonna watch some shows. I haven't really kind of filled you guys in on 
what shows we have been watching. We just finished The Bear, which was so good. I really loved that show. At first, I wasn't sure because of all the yelling. I'm like, hmm, if they're going to yell like this the whole time, I don't know if I can hack it. But it turned out to be so good, especially since, like, Jamie and I really love you know good food my whole family i feel like i grew up eating out all the time because back home in saipan they were members of like the hyatt regency and so they had access to basically the whole hotel and like the pool and the gym and the tennis courts basically yeah like the whole hotel without staying in the rooms so we as kids had access all the time so we spent so much time there like almost every day definitely every weekend at the hotel so we would play tennis there swim that's where I got I had my tennis lessons growing up and my parents mainly loved like the whole gym and locker room benefit that they would get out of being members so after work they go to the gym there take a shower and then it was just convenient to have dinner at the hotel restaurant like when I tell you almost every night literally almost every night to the point where my dad kind of got sick of like eating out that he started his own restaurant and then from there he ended up selling that restaurant and started eating at, eating at home because I think they just got sick of eating out all the time sorry this camera so that's almost kind of like where I'm at right now I love eating out I love good food Jamie and I you know go out every Friday to try somewhere new in LA or we just stick to like our trusted go-to places but I just appreciate good well-made food actually this past Friday we went to one called Gemma de Mare it was in or it's in Brentwood I guess I should have known I wasn't too impressed there was a lot of hype about it I wasn't too impressed though because it didn't feel refined like the food was good it was just very heavy like if you just wanted to grub on italian food that was a little better than just your average italian what do you call it hole in the wall i guess so let's say you're living in new york i'm sure you can find a lot of italian hole in the walls and then you have your carbones and stuff right and whatever is along that level of carbone bar pitti whatever bar pity anyway so that's kind of what I'm talking about with the restaurant that we had here on Friday. It's part of like the Ospi chain. If you guys are in LA, you guys know Ospi in Venice. So we went there. I think Ospi was a little bit better in my opinion, but still again, like the portions were big. It wasn't as refined as like a carbone uh, in my opinion. This is just how I feel. I just felt like everything was just so heavy and just like, for example, at Gemma de Mar, we ordered this garlic bread. I had no idea I probably should have read more about on the menu but it came out with a bunch of melted cheese on top and I usually don't eat my garlic bread doesn't usually have cheese I'm sure some of them do it just felt like like I literally felt like I was at Pizza Hut it reminded me of Pizza Hut pizza for some reason like Pizza Hut breadsticks and I was like I just didn't feel good eating it you know and the spicy rigatoni is what I got it tasted like Carbone like I definitely think that they were trying to copy carbones Which I think everywhere does try to copy carbones because now everyone has a spicy rigatoni. I think it's because of them but It was So thick and heavy though. It's almost like they try to copy and they got it right with the flavor But with the texture and the sauce and how thick it was They didn't they don't know the secret. You know what I mean? Like they don't know that like one last secret that makes carbone carbone and specifically their spicy rigatoni but it just felt to me like a level above a hole in the wall italian but not upscale refined which i think a lot of people like because it's more casual right it's not too fancy and the vibe in there is like it's not casual but it's not fancy it's just like you know it's like in the middle but what am i even talking about i think that's why we really enjoyed the bear because we both love food, we love eating out. My brother was actually on Triple D with Guy Fieri, Fieri on um, the Food Network because he also worked in the food industry in Hawaii when he was living there. So we're like a family of foodies. My um, taste buds and my openness to try foods came from 
like my dad I would say mostly like he was the first person that introduced me to like fancy cheese because we would have dinner at the at the Hyatt back home and there was one fancy restaurant that we would go to there on special occasions and they would have like a whole cheese section or basically a cheese board with all different cheeses and there were like the fancy cheeses and as a kid you really don't care about stuff like that but i just remember my dad had me try it and i really tasted the flavor and like how different it is from just like your american cheese that you slap on a sandwich you know what i'm saying like craft singles <laughs> I was like, oh, whoa, this is good. I was like a little kid too, so. It was just something he should have probably never introduced me to because now I'm just like, you know? And I'm sure a lot of people on here will understand and get it, but yeah. Here's my, here's my Japanese curry getting all warmed up. I swear it's so good the next day. All the flavors just kind of sink in and a little bit thicker too um so anyway watch the bear we started blackbird what's that one show about the one where the lady kills her husband and then goes to trial jessica biel made one version of it i think on netflix or something but then there's another version on some other streaming site anyway watch that that was really good we're on season nine of love island and in this season's actually really good. I feel like they changed things up so that there's drama earlier on because the last couple seasons before season nine took forever to like get going. It was almost like it took Casa Amor to really get some drama going and that's long. You know that it's, it's a commitment. So I'm glad they kind of like are stirring things up earlier so it's more interesting, but I'm surprised we've caught on this fast because we're almost current. So I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying Hard Knocks on HBO with the Jets. It's almost football season and Jamie is just so excited. I'm so excited for football season too because you know, he's, he's from Kansas and it's just literally their pride and joy. I really enjoy watching the Chiefs because of him and everything he's basically taught me about it and how like Kansas just always lost and how he would just be so heartbroken as a kid growing up that now to have Mahomes in there and then they are just like winning and just like the history of everything and he's taught me so much about the player that he is I enjoy it so much that I cannot wait for football season and I'm so into it I've been so into it we went to Super Bowl I think I've mentioned that in 2020 when they won their first one which was crazy because they were almost going to lose. And then they just won last year. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens this season. Nevertheless, it's just always interesting. I enjoy all the games. I enjoy watching Josh Allen. I enjoy watching the Bengals. And just all of it. All of it. So we're watching Hard Knocks. We're watching the tennis one on Netflix. When are they going to bring back the golf one? Anyway, so that's what we've been watching. Oh, I want to talk about Roni, or Real Housewives of New York, because, you know, Roni used to be my favorite with the original cast. And now that it has a whole new cast, it's like scary because I have high expectations and you just never know what to expect. And I think I'm really liking it so far. I really like Erin. I listened to a podcast recently where they interviewed her and i didn't realize obviously i didn't realize not like i know her but she's quintessential like new york she literally knows so many pretty big popular names like she used to hang around with like scott disick alec monopoly the artist if you guys are not familiar she knows people in new york like she's actually from there born and raised and she's pretty well connected so I appreciate that. I really love, is it Jenna? The one that was head of J. Crew. I really love her and I love her style. Some people may think it's boring. I just think it's her and she really doesn't, you know, try to stray away from her own style and I love that. Just so I'm not like, whatever. Brynn, I feel like I'm gonna enjoy her more. We're just kind of getting into the nitty gritty of getting to know her on like a deeper level with her like childhood and upbringing which i appreciate 
and I think it's just so sad that you know she didn't have parents I think she's so so beautiful like so beautiful I may might like her style the most on the show I don't know she's just gorgeous oh my god but her her like background with her whole family it makes me so sad so I'm just kind of like interested to hear more and you know kind of learn so much about people and the way they are um yeah I think Bryn and Erin and Jenna are my favorite so yeah I, I think I'm enjoying it okay I think it's time to eat Louder. Yeah, you want to say? It's a cool Wednesday. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> What's your name? Presley. Presley what? The tacos. <laughs> You're so funny. Presley, what today? Did you sleep? Did you sleep with that one? Yeah. Yeah. Did you sleep good? Did you have a good sleep? Does my tummy? Did your tummy make noises? Yeah. Are you hungry? Teddy sit. You want him to sit? Yeah. Okay. He's kind of big. You want me to help you? Yeah. Okay. Let me help you make him sit. That's what we do every morning, right? We line up our teddy bears. We love your Care Bears from Grandma, right? It's gonna fall. Yeah. <laughs> We have to try. Mommy needs two hands, but we can try. Yes. Ooh, he's stand he's sitting. I did it. Orange you want the orange one? Yeah. We got lots of Care Bears. We have a whole collection, and we oh, like to. Okay, let's do it. Good morning. I didn't say good morning yet. I'm gonna line all them up here. You, ah, he hit my We have to be very careful. It, it is, it, it's Mama. Oh, this is Mama? Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's Dada. It's Dada? The, Dada how? Oh, no, Press. Dada how? Let me fix him. Dada Put him over here. Dada how? Yeah, we don't want him to fall. What's it? I know. I know, but you just pushed him down. Don't push them down because mommy, oh no. Let's not touch them because they're going to fall. Remember what we said when you go to school, you have to come out. Hello, Presley. Hi, Mama. I'm playing in a garbage truck. Garbage truck? Ooh. You gonna pick up all the trash? Yeah. Okay. Is that a girl driving or is that a boy? It is. It's a girl driving the garbage truck? That's nice. Wow. He has to come out in the door. He has to come out from the door? <laughs> Is that the sound Dada's car makes? What sound does this car make? Yeah. Bye. I know, baby. One second. I'm almost done. Not done yet, though. Bye -bye. Okay, wait. Mommy's not done. You very hungry, girl? Mama's very hungry. You're not very hungry? I'm very hungry. Bite it? Yeah. Yummy. Mm, hi, Presley. What are you eating? What are you eating? Mm. Mm. Charm. Charm? Mama, it. Okay. Oh, waffles. Mm.
Okay, so I'm getting ready now. I am probably gonna film a couple things. I'm waiting for some packages to arrive and I'm just gonna be getting ready, but a couple updates, I don't even know. I don't like calling it updates because it's like, why do I need to update you guys? You guys didn't ask for updates. I don't know, I'm always like, updates. Or I hear people say updates and it's like, what? Were you updating? <laughs> anyway, so I don't know if I mentioned, I'm pretty sure I did, but we're going to, or Presley is starting school in September. She was originally going to start this month, but we changed her school. I, it just all ended up working out. We switched her school off. It was in our like radar, but it was just like a schedule thing that we thought they didn't have. We need a school that was more full-time, so that's the first school that we found was more full-time, so that's why we like enrolled her. We ended up touring this other school. We know a lot of our neighbors have put their kids or their kids are in there, and you know, we heard good things, and so I just told Jamie, look, let's just tour it regardless of if you know it doesn't fit our schedule now maybe it can fit our schedule like next year when she turns three because i thought you know i think they like open up to a more full-time schedule when they get older so we went to tour it and oh my god as soon as we got in there presley just went off on her own and started just playing with other kids playing with the toys she felt so comfortable I immediately had such a good feeling about it, but then it came down to like talking about the schedule and so we were asking like like the principal or whatever. We let her know we were looking for something more long term, like we said. And she let us know they had a full term. Sorry, not long term. Full full term. Anyway, she did let us know that they had like a more full time. <laughs> what is wrong with me? A full-time schedule for Presley but that they were just kind of full and so she was gonna see if they could squeeze her in and they did and she was like oh, I had to get her in I had to squeeze her in which made us feel really good so it all ended up just like working out and I love how we didn't have any expectations at all I just love how it just ended up that way it just always ends up working out you know and I just need to keep telling myself that more often but here's a reminder to all of you in case there's something that is like stressing you out. It just always happens the way it's supposed to. So, I look so orange in this lighting. Anyway, so yeah, she starts in September, on September 6th or something. And I am very excited for her. She's definitely ready to go to school. Just like the hardest thing to try to find the right place, I guess. We heard good things about the other one, but the way she was when we took her to this other school was just very reassuring and comforting. And she has some of our like park friends like our neighbors that are there their kids are there um and then like her other park friend is there so that's kind of nice so anyway i was like talking to you guys about the whole doctor debacle thing and i wanted to just touch on it a little more because tomorrow i'm getting my blood work done and like i said it's like a whole body check but i you know it's just I'm not into just treating the pain of things and that's what I feel like a lot of people, a lot of doctors do but also like every time I would just see my doctor or like my husband's doctor because my doctor sometimes would be gone because she was pregnant they just always seemed so tired they just seemed like they didn't want to be there they just Seem like they just wanted to get to the next patient and you know I know that doctors have such like a demanding schedule but not only just that they just have so much paperwork once it's all said and done at the same time I know they're burnt out too you know but I also know how it is when you like 
have your own business. It's all on you. Like, it's just up to you and not like a big organization like a UCLA or a Kaiser or you know what I'm saying? It's really just on you to do a good job. There's not like a big organization backing you. So that's like another thing. I just really like how the doctor that I found is really about just getting to know you on a personal level first and foremost because she understands like like everyone's different not just treating everything the same everyone's gonna react to everything different you know and like getting to know you your stress level your environment what your everyday looks like because things like that can also cause other things to happen and it's not just oh you know i have this issue check that and that's it so yeah we will see Jamie's gonna end up coming with me tomorrow too because everything that I was like telling him about my doctor is like he likes it, you know, he likes it too. So we'll see, we'll see how it all goes. You know, unfortunately with her being like, or having her own practice, they'll submit a super bill to my insurance, but it's like mostly out of pocket and that's how a lot of times it is with these private practices. And I just think that's just a flaw in our system because I just think that it shouldn't matter what class you are, you know, like I think everybody should have the same equal access to healthcare, like how they do it in Europe. Like I always see these articles on Europe banning certain things, like certain things in food because it's bad and harmful and the US doesn't even do half of those things and the healthcare is that way in Europe, you know. I just wish America had better, like, be better to offer its citizens. <laughs> so that's that. Thursday, I have to be in Orange County. So I might, like, make this a vlog a couple days long. Just because I kind of do have quite a bit going on. But yeah, Presley is very ready for school. I think you guys saw this morning that she <laughs> likes to kind of stay in her crib and play and like, you know, just play. And I just was trying to warn her. I've been trying to warn her every morning for the past week that when baby school, because she calls it baby school, it's so cute. When baby school starts, you have to get up. You have to, you can't really like, play in the crib anymore because you have to get ready for baby school and you know hopefully she'll be excited i've been listening to a lot of really great podcasts a new one that i found recently is aaron foster and sarah foster's podcast so do you guys remember david foster from house size of beverly hills well not from there like he's on his own, he's like very well known because he's like a singer, songwriter, producer of so many big songs and worked with so many big artists. But he was Yolanda Hadid's, Yolanda Foster, I don't know what last name she goes by. <laughs> but she was married to David Foster, but David Foster has kids from another woman. It's not Yolanda's kids, but anyway, Aaron and Sarah Foster, that's her dad. They have their own podcast now. I've always loved them. They used to have a show, I think on like VH1 or something, and they were just so funny. Oh my gosh, they were so funny. They're so funny on the podcast, and they like, they um, have the most interesting topics, I feel like. I was so into this one topic where they had on Jefferson. I don't know if you guys know that lawyer, Jefferson. He has like 2 million followers on Instagram. Anyway, so he basically went on their podcast and talks about like, the topic was you don't have to attend every argument you're invited to. And basically he just, you know, he's a trial lawyer. So he just talks about how he handles certain arguments it could be how you handle an argument with a friend how you would ha how he would handle an argument you know let's say a person did something to you and you want them to apologize but they're one of those people that apologizes by saying 
I'm sorry you felt that way, which if you apologize that way, that's like completely wrong. You're basically apologizing for the person's feelings and not what you actually did. He just talks about so many things. I got so many takeaways, so many like tips and good advice if you're ever in certain situations. And it's all like great, like, you know, adult ways of handling things, but also kind of you're getting your way, like in a fair way, you know what I mean? It was just like one of the most interesting podcast topics I think I've ever listened to. And I think they even said that people are piggybacking off of their episode with him. And now people are kind of like trying to copy because that episode was so good and did so well. And I guess it's getting so much traction that other podcasters are <laughs> trying to get him on and do the same type of episode. I do think it's annoying though. Like I hate, I understand that, you know, sometimes people need to promote things and so they'll go on tour and do different press and media things. And, but it's just annoying when I go on my podcast and then that's all that there is. It's like the same interview with the same person on like four different podcasts, you know what I mean? But I also get it at the same time. I get it, I get it. But I think that's why I like Aaron's, Aaron Foster and Sarah Foster podcast, Foster's podcast is because they just try to make it a little bit different and think about very interesting topics. Like they had one that I listened to yesterday, they had an etiquette, like specialist, I don't know. Someone that is like a master in etiquette. It was a younger woman cause she's like trying to modernize etiquette because whenever people think of etiquette they think of like old school like older people but this is a woman that's like younger and she's trying to teach etiquette but in a modern way like how you know we would really apply etiquette in this day and age and the big topic was like wedding etiquette they talked mostly about wedding etiquette because a lot of people don't know and a lot of people do things that are i don't know like kind of like mm, no no you shouldn't do that like for example they talked about you know, if you're having a wedding, is it right? Is it okay to ask? Like if you can't afford an open bar, is it okay to ask your guests to help pay for the open bar? Like maybe each guest pitch in $10 and it was like, absolutely not. Like if you can't afford it, just don't do it. But definitely don't ask your guests to help pay for it. You know what I mean? Which I know there's so many weddings going on. So many people are engaged, getting married. And I think we've talked about this before, I'm not sure. But, you know, weddings are so expensive. I think they've just gotten super expensive, like even more in the last couple years. Just parties in general are so over the top these days and they're beautiful, you know? But I also think there's something to be said about just trying to do something different. I think, like if I could imagine my wedding today, I would probably just make it small and intimate and like try to make it as different as possible because there's you know there's a lot of glam weddings like people pay millions of dollars for these super glam weddings and at, at this point like for me they kind of all look the same <laughs> like i am no longer wowed by the super over the top glamorous weddings because they just look the same it's like huge flowers and huge tablescapes and i don't remember the most recent wedding that's that over the top. I don't remember, I can't really tell it apart anymore from the other one because they end up just looking the same, you know? I think you can have a big wedding, but just like do something different. One thing I'm really happy is gone and like I'm really not seeing any more of is the uh, pompous grass. Don't hate me for saying it out loud, but I'm just so glad that that's dead. Oh, I'm so sick of that. My brows are always so out of control and it looks so crazy, but I just clean it up and it all comes back down to earth. I feel like there's something else that I was gonna mention and talk to you guys about. It's really hard for me to talk and tell stuff, like tell a story or whatever when I'm doing my makeup. Not sure how some people do it. All right, I'm just really taking forever today. But, I'm almost done. I'm gonna do my lip color. 
I am using Lip Cheat, uh, Charlotte Tilbury Lip Liner in Pillow Talk 2 Medium. So, lining my lips. Then I'm gonna use Stockholm by NYX. It's a little more of a pinky nude. Sometimes I just like to go back in and refine everything. And I'm just gonna add a little more blush. This is the Pillow Talk Blush Cheek to Chic. Okay, having lunch. This is just a sourdough, roasted turkey, and pepper jack with Kewpie mayo sandwich. Very boring. Oh, and some guac. I hate, like I love lunchtime, but I hate thinking about what to eat. So, my worst nightmare happened. Remember how I was just talking to you about the podcast that I was listening to, Aaron and Sarah Foster's podcast, and how they interviewed that trial lawyer who basically tells you how to handle and navigate like crazy people, basically. And I mentioned that one part about how I hate when people apologize by saying, I'm sorry, that's how you feel. Well, that just literally happened to me. I was calling my doctor's office trying to schedule an appointment and I just think that a lot of like the people that do these things at doctor's offices I don't know what they're going through but they're never really friendly or happy in my case she was just rude she was like, trying to ask me what kind of appointment I needed and I'm basically doing a follow-up appointment my doctor never really like said what kind of appointment she just said schedule follow-up so that's what i told her and then she was like yeah but a follow-up for what you know what i mean like she was getting irritated and i was like in my head at that point when i tell you that the doctor didn't specify you should be able to go in and look at the records okay like that's just part of your job you see things that most people can't anyway i just let it be so then she's trying to schedule the appointment with me we go through two dates that just don't work because presley's first day of school and then another one that just like absolutely didn't work it's not that i didn't want it to work i like actually want to go to the first appointment i can go to um this is my other doctor <laughs> anyway then she jumps to october and i'm like is that the next available that you have i was like is that the soonest other one you have and she was like well i just gave you two and they didn't work for you so yeah and i was like holy shit and then that just set me off like at that at that point like that when she responded that way i i had it and so then i said you know i think you're really rude like you're being really rude and i was like i i'm just trying to schedule an appointment follow up with my doctor and also like you don't know what your patients are going through like i feel like you should be a little more compassionate is what i said and she said, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. And then I, and then I said, mm, you should actually apologize for how you're making your, patient, your patients feel and not for their feeling. <laughs> I actually used what that trial lawyer said and she didn't like it. She like did not take it very well. She was like really pissed actually. She kept going with her attitude and she was even talking over me. I just think there's such a lack of training in those areas and like people are actually going through stuff you know what i mean and people are actually seeing doctors for real like legit issues and concerns and you don't know what they're going through and i just feel like these people just need to be a little more compassionate i used to work in pharma for a whole year and i hated it and i hated it because i feel like everyone that i would come in contact with and there were always women you know mostly the men were not ever as rude but I just, they were always just not nice, you know? And I don't know what it is. And I'm sorry if you're one of those people that works in those like industries. And I hope you're being nicer because I feel like it's like healthcare. Like we don't know what people are going through health wise. And to me, your health is like the number one thing above anything else. Like if you don't have that, like forget about all the money you make, but like let's also be a little more compassionate. <laughs> 
but I cannot believe that I just used what I learned and she didn't like it and that it actually happened but you know I don't know where that even came from the whole I'm sorry you feel that way type of apology like whoever started that because I always hated it and it is true it's like you know apologize for actually what you did don't apologize for my feelings <laughs> just say I'm sorry that I made you feel that way that's like a lot better all right so it's dinner time I have Brony on and I am gonna make some chicken tacos. It is Tuesday But I also I just had these taco shells laying around and I wanted to put them to use so You know, I feel like I make this a lot on here and I wish I had some gloves because This is gonna just get my nails and fingers all dirty but I feel like I have to just grab it and just chuck it. Anyway, so today was a productive day I feel like. Wow, this chicken is really tough. I can see how it's like, So yeah, that's what's for dinner. Jamie is upstairs doing um, bedtime with Presley. I used to always do bedtime with her and then I feel like she just started getting all crazy. Like it used to be the both of us. I would give her a bath then he would put her down. Or no, he would give her a bath then I would put her down. Then we switched it so that I would give her a bath and then he would put her down. So we'd both like be there for bath time. But then she would be like all crazy and not listen to us and I realized that when there's two of us she kind of acts out a little more versus when it's just one of us and Presley is such a daddy's girl like she loves 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 her dad and I feel like she responds to him better during bath for some reason so now he just does it both while I cook it actually just kind of works out better so then I do the you know, the morning shift usually anyway. I've done it since, ever since. Okay, let's try the chicken. It's good. Mm. All right, calling it a night. We just watched some shows, had dinner, and that was it. So, see you tomorrow. Good morning. It's Wednesday. Good morning. I'm with Jim Jim. He came with me to my appointment because he wanted to meet my doctor. I think I told you guys that I did blood work today with my new doctor, which I really like. And it was really nice because I didn't expect... To, oh, my bracelet's going to come off. Oh, no. I didn't expect to see her today just because I was drawing blood. And usually it's like the, you know, the medical assistants that draw blood. But she drew my blood. And she's just like, yeah. I like she to do it all. it all for my patients. Um, which is just so nice and I don't know if I my battery's gonna die so I will have to continue this in my when we get home if it just dies on me completely thank you for signaling anyway I what was I saying <laughs> you're talking about how she just does everything and yeah oh so I don't know if I ever mentioned on here like lately every time I've had to go in for blood work it would be so painful when they would puncture me, like in my vein, obviously. It would be so painful, like I'd feel like a sore feeling, right? I would always complain to you. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's so painful. Usually when they puncture me, it's just, just the little pinch going in that hurts. But no, it would be like the whole time, like I'd have to sit there while they take X amount of vials and feel this like painful, burning, sore feeling. And I thought it was from them maybe not drying the alcohol. You know, when they clean the alcohol, they just, they puncture you. And I thought it was just like alcohol maybe going into my bloodstream while they're doing that. And I was like, maybe that's it. But the last time I got blood work, I told the guy and I said, can you just make sure it's dry? And he made sure it's dry and I still felt that feeling. And it's just so frustrating. Anyway, so she did my blood. She, she said, oh no, let's try this. She lied, me, told me to lie down. And you know, I she wrapped the little thing to make it tight around my arm, and then she gave me the ball to squeeze. And 
punctured me, no pain. No pain. She felt a lot better. No pain. And I was like looking at Jamie like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, of course I go to this nice new doctor that I love and she makes In a quarter it all better. So I'm really happy because good Lord, they took a lot of vials. And if I was still feeling that sore pain, I would have been in pain for a long time because they took so many vials and I was also just like, when's this going to end? You know, <laughs> the lady taking the blood after the doctor did it all. She was talking to Jamie. So the nurse or whatever, Emmy was in there doing the rest. And she just kept looking at me. She's like, I saw you looking around. Cause I was like, Jesus, when's this going to end? But I didn't know you thought that way. I actually saw all the vials they were going to take and I didn't want to say anything. And what? <laughs> I knew it was a lot. Thank God you didn't say anything. I thought it was only going to be like six. Yeah, it was a lot of vials. Because six is pretty quick, you know? The blood flows in the vials pretty quick and they can do it like pretty fast. But how many think how many vials of blood do you think they took? I think it was in I think for the all the tests. Okay, so I just got ready. Have my makeup on. I'm about to film my little haul for you guys. And I think it will be up at the same time this vlog goes up. It's basically a mango haul, an H&M haul. What else did I show? Oh, two new bags that I got that are like designer. But yeah, I don't even know what I was saying or where I left off last. Did I already tell you guys? I told you guys about the blood work. I know I was talking to Jamie about something and it cut off. But anyway, let's just like move on. I am using new makeup. Got makeup from Did. I feel like so maybe that looks more even i feel like one side was more blush heavy and then just turn around and it looks a little more even now so i'm gonna take my element and then i'm gonna film that little haul and then i'm hopefully going to work out okay i'm out in the backyard and i'm gonna do a quick workout I've recently been mixing YouTube workouts. I really like Mad Fit on YouTube. So I'll do that. Usually like some kind of cardio full body workout from her or them. And then I'll go on to my, the Pilates class and sign on. And then do like something quick and then a stretch from there. She has like a stretch that I really, really love that kind of like takes away all the aches that i get especially up here so let's do that right now okay Someone came to visit me outside during my workout to do some art, right? Presley, what are you doing? Are you painting? She was very talkative earlier, but I think she's very focused, so. Are you finger painting? Okay, let's just watch the artist at work. She's a little busy. Presley's having her dinner. I'm just making dinner. We're doing rosemary chicken tonight. I'm just cutting. I'm gonna like pickle some cucumbers. Don't mind my horrible cutting skills. Really don't care.
we're back in the car. I feel like this is very rare for me to vlog. And it's very rare we're together on a Friday. I know, right? One, How exciting. Yeah, at 1 p.m. Because we are going to lunch. We're going lunch to lunch with our friends who just had a baby. So we haven't seen them in a while. And they're going to bring the baby. And our other friend came back in from Miami. So she used to live here in LA and she moved to Miami and now she's visiting also the friend that had a baby so we're all just gonna go have a nice lunch together and see the little baby. I'm excited to see the baby. I know. It's her I, second baby so. Yeah I want to hold her yeah. and she's so cute and chunky. So that's what we're doing today and then we have like a nice little dinner later. Day so, night. Yeah, Fridays are like our day nights usually, so our nanny comes a little bit later so she can stay later. Then we do our date nights. Hopefully she can still like babysit for us when Presley goes to school because obviously we're going to lose her, which is really, 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 really sad for us. We've already been through that one time with her first nanny and that was so sad. Like we were all just so, so, so sad. Like. A week prior crying like couldn't stop crying could not stop crying and if I think about it hard enough about this nanny leaving and it Presley really only has like a week and a half with her left and I could easily cry but I don't want to think about it because it's very emotional and Presley like absolutely loves both oh, of them so much. she's extremely close to both of them yeah and now she has such a strong bond with our new nanny or not our new nanny but our nanny now well and the cool thing is that our first nanny is getting married so we're gonna go to her wedding we're invited to her wedding that was so nice at the end of the month in september and Presley's gonna come with us because they've always kept in touch like she would always visit or when we go close to where she lives we would like you know invite her to have lunch with us so we've kept in touch this whole time and so we're excited for her wedding and we'll keep you guys updated but we'll bring you guys along a little bit with our lunch but there's gonna be a lot of catch-up so I won't probably show too much hello everyone I have been a really bad vlogger so I'm just gonna end the vlog here it's been a couple days since like the last footage I think the last time I talked to you it was like Friday and we were going to dinner or lunch or something and I just forgot my camera so I think we have en enough good footage and then I'm going to pick back up and vlog again. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.